Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. With me here today are two identical vehicles. You know, may not be able to tell it from the surface, but underneath both of these vehicles rides the exact same 74 kilowatt hour skateboard battery platform in two all wheel drive EV vehicles from Hyundai Motor, Motor Corporation. On my left, we have the Hyundai Ioniq 5, and on my right, we've got the Kia EV6 GT line. As I said, both of these are all-wheel drive, both powered by the same 300 plus horsepower, 74 kilowatt hour battery. And in this video, we're gonna take a deep dive into what makes these two seemingly identical vehicles so very different from one another. Starting under the hoods of both of these, you won't find a motor because they are an electric vehicle in their own right. And you don't really get a front trunk. You do get front storage in both. It's the exact same plastic cargo tray that's large enough for uh, your cables and everything you need for at-home charging. Closing the hood, we will take a look here at the Ionic 5 first. Very unique styling and a one-off style from the Hyundai brand. Very pixelated design in all that they did. I really like the blocky look of the headlights, the DRLs, and even the turn signals, which you can see uh, from the passenger side, uh, the DRLs actually turn into the turn signals. Up front here, moving across the entire width, this actually lights up when the car is on. It's a little hard to see in these lighting conditions, but trust me, there are little white lines that light up. And so at night in, in true darkness, this has a very unique signature as it's moving front and center closer to you. Down here, you have active aero shutters to help with airflow in and around the vehicle. Very good integrated parking sensors. And then moving around to the side here, you get very, very unique 20 inch wheels with this blacked out center section that at speed looks like a saw going down the road. Uh, they are wrapped in Primacy Tour tires from Michelin. Moving down the profile, it is a very deceptive car in its design because the wheelbase of this vehicle is actually four inches longer than the Palisade and Telluride three row crossovers from both of these brands. At 118 and some change inches, this is a very long platform and all of that space goes inside. You will see here both vehicles feature these pop out door handles that do retract into the vehicle when it is locked. So getting in to the vehicle if you aren't supposed to is a big hindrance. Back here at the back, more angular styling that echoes all the designs and creases down the side profile of the vehicle. Very rem reminiscent to some other Hyundai products. Think the Tucson, think the Elantra. Very angular styling, but then again, back here we get more of the pixel look. You get pixelated taillights, pixelated turn signals, and just pixels everywhere. If you are into Minecraft, I'm sure you will love this vehicle. And then down here, this lets you know H-Track all-wheel drive. This is the dual motor version. You do have a power lift gate back here in the back with a rather spacious rear cargo compartment. You do have a false load floor with some additional uh, tire mobility kit and things down here for that. You do get a cargo shade for privacy and we will talk more on the interior here in just a bit because now I wanna shift gears and come around to the Kia EV6. Again, rides on the same 118 inch and some change wheelbase that this Ionic does, but completely 
different design language. Where Hyundai went with angular and boxy and pixelated, Kia went smooth, flowing lines, very organic in its design, very interesting in its own right. You can see they also use LED lights, DRLs, and turn signals up front, but took an entirely different approach uh, from Hyundai when designing the front of this vehicle. You also get Kia's new design language, featured first here on the EV6, has now translated up to the Sportage Compact Crossover, which as you move around to the side of the EV6, you start to get some tall wagon crossover crossover vibes with the overall design and shape of this vehicle. So you get this tall roof line dripping back down to this tapered tail. You get this very large duckbill spoiler taillight module system here that looks really cool. And we haven't even talked about this matte finish on the exterior. It just looks so amazing. You do get 20 inch wheels on this one, but these are continental tires wrapped in, uh, wrapped around the 21 or 20 inch Kia wheels. Moving back to the very back, back here, the lighting signature of this one is unique and different unto itself. Whereas we were pixelated in all things on the Hyundai, uh, we get a much different design back here. So you get this diamond pattern in the chrome trim, and then you get a dot pattern here in the uh, tail lights and LED light bar that kind of mirrors the Doppler effect, and it gets bigger as it goes down this waterfall cascading down the side. This too has a power lift gate back in the back, very similar setup on the inside, 60-40 split bench seat. You get your cargo shade here. You have your false load floor with additional stuff underneath and a button to close it here. All told, two very unique design expressions on a very, very uh, unique 118-inch uh, wheelbase and EV platform. Sitting in the 2022 Ionic 5, I'm not going to spend too much time because I'm actually getting this exact one in a very short amount of time on my home turf for an extended test drive. But I do have the window sticker here. I will say this is the limited model. It is all-wheel drive, and it stickers for 55920 Some things I will point out that are unique to this vehicle. The pixelated pattern continues on the leatherette seats and running down the ventilated portion here. So you can see that pixelated pattern, which is also carried over on the door panels with a unique granite stone-like look there as well. The center console is very unique in this Ionic 5 because it actually slides forward and backward and allows you to find the optimum seating position and comfortable position. You do have two cup holders here, two USB-A ports, and a Qi wireless charger down here. You have an additional USB port up front and a fairly good size center console here, but plenty of storage uh, for you to throw a bag or whatever you need to do in this vehicle. Climate controls up here, very easy. Two 12.3 inch screens, uh, very familiar if you've been in a Hyundai product, uh, but updated for EV use. You also get your battery readout here on the infotainment. Again, don't want to spend too much time in this particular one because I get to spend a whole week with it coming up very soon. Steering wheel feels very good in my hands. Uh, because of this floating center console, the gear selector is actually a dial right here on the steering wheel stock with the park button right here. Very comfortable, very easy to drive, very much looking forward to getting this one on my home turf, but let's check out that back seat because I did mention how much wheelbase this vehicle has and it all translates to interior room. 
So sitting in the back seat of the Ionic 5, fabric on the backs of the front seats and mesh pockets down here. You do get two USB-A ports and a little storage cubby on the back of the sliding center console. Speaking of sliding, the 6040 split bench also slides in 6040 fashion. So uh, it is truly a 6040 split bench seat that also reclines so much that I can just lounge back here and stare out of this massive fixed in place uh, glass skylight. Very, very comfortable riding back here. I can also put up my peasant blockers, which is a very welcome addition in what will be a family vehicle. And yes, the air vents, because the center console slides back and forth, are here on the uh, B pillars in the vehicle. So you still get good airflow back here for back passengers. I will mention this device while we are back here. This is for you to be able to use the battery that the power stored in the battery of this vehicle uh, to charge other things, other items. So you plug this into the charge port and then here on this side, you actually, if I can get it to open, have a, it's not going to do it, but a 110 plug here in this. So you can actually charge other things from your vehicle. I did mention this is a 6040 split bench seat that when I pop out does fold nearly flat. It's got a little bit of an incline, but opens up that rear storage capacity quite a bit. But let's move into that Kia and see what makes it so unique. Sitting in the driver's seat of the 2022 Kia EV6 GT Line all-wheel drive, uh, this is actually the more expensive of the two, slated at 58105 I'm sure a lot of that has to deal with that steel matte gray paint, which is a $700 option. I mentioned before, this is a very similar vehicle. As far as the driveline and components are concerned, uh, it, it rides on the same platform, has the same amount of power, but it's a very different vehicle, both outside, which we've covered, and inside. You have a fixed in place center console here, which allows for this dial uh, drive, drive mode selector. So turn it to drive, neutral, reverse, and the like. Power button here, heated and ventilated uh, seat controls up here, haptic touch buttons, as well as your heated steering wheel. AC controls are pretty similar, but I really like this ambient light detail that you really can't see here in this cloudy daylight, but much more ambient lighting in this Kia EV6. I didn't even mention the heads up display that was in the Hyundai. This one has it as well. It is very massive, puts the speed limit right where you need it, and does have an augmented reality feature if you're using navigation. This also has a Qi wireless charger put right here in a very convenient spot underneath a very decently sized center console. And then you have this large open area underneath this floating center section. Very nice, very well done, very unique to this Kia EV6. And before I leave the front, I do want to call attention to these suede covered seats that are unique again to the EV6 and just stand out a little bit compared to the Ionic 5. But let's move back to the back and see what makes the back seat unique. Sitting in the back of the EV6, you don't get the peasant blockers for rear seat passengers, but you do get some unique detailing back here in some of the trim. You do get heated outboard seats, this fold down center armrest with this choice of cup holder or cubbage, <laughs> cubby storage. So that's nice and unique. Hard plastic seat backs, so that would work really well for young kids. I know Tucker will be kicking the backs of these seats quite a bit. And you actually get USB charge ports on the backs of both of the front seats. This seat does not slide, but it is 60-40 split and does recline, but nowhere near as much as in the Ionic 5. So if you want a cruising vehicle uh, for all your passengers to be 
ultimately comfortable, uh, the Ionic 5 would be the choice. You do still get your air vents on the pillars, but I don't get a massive fixed in place skylight in this one. I get a rather large front sunroof. And that about does it for the differences here in the Kia EV6 and Hyundai Ionic 5. As I did mention, that Ionic 5 will be with me on my home turf for a week long worth of testing. I will actually attempt to do some range testing on that one as well because the EPA rates it at just over 240 miles of range on a single charge. If you want to see more content like this from us, whether it's here at Texas Motor Speedway or on our home turf, be sure and hit subscribe. Follow us uh, on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all those good things. But leave me a comment down below. Which do you prefer, Kia EV6 or Hyundai Ioniq 5? Until next time, gearheads. Bye.